There is no hope. It's not something that comes because you're not doing something right. It's going to get you no matter what. It was so bad. I was in agony, actually. And actually going out in the car um, and screaming. Preceding every hot flush, I would just get this overwhelming sense of panic, dizziness, could hardly breathe. Oh, nobody said it's going to hurt so much, you know. And Bloody hell, what's going on? And Welcome to the She Word, conversations that women rarely have but really should. Now, before I get going, I'm going to get you guys to have a little look under the screen here and you'll find a subscribe button. Whatever you do before the end of this show, just pop on that and make sure you subscribe or you like or you follow because we have some amazing things coming from the She Word over the next six months. We have She Word women in business coming. We have another episode of the Young Women's Edition and we have the he word coming up as well as of course once we've done with this probably another fourth season of the she word. So make sure you subscribe to make sure that you are up to date on everything that's happening here with us. And of course if you're joining us from the Patreons page, if you're a subscriber of the Patreons page, welcome! You're seeing this before anybody else does and not only are you going to be getting some fantastic offers from our program partners, not only do you get the content before everybody else and exclusive content, of course just by joining the Patreon page, 50% of the profits of the Patreon page goes directly to the Richmond Foundation to support women who are watching this show, who've seen the things that we talk about, who need therapy and support but simply can't afford it. So you guys, a special thank you for joining us. So this show is revisiting the theme of menopause, the gift that just keeps giving. If you haven't seen the first show on menopause, I really encourage you to go back and see it. It's in the first season and it's with Moira Delia, Marielle Demek, and Corinne Muscat. We talked about this epic topic that is so rarely discussed among women, even women of a menopausal age, but it affects every single woman who makes it to this age in one way or another. So I can hardly believe that we don't talk about this more often. It's a massive event that's going to affect your life. So I'm really glad because I have three amazing women around the table who are also on this journey with us. First of all, Karen Schranz. Karen, this is your second rodeo with The She Word. It's so good to have you back. You're a fitness instructor. You're a businesswoman. You're a mum. You're a wife. You were on the show uh, back in season one talking about women and fertility after, of course, having been on the interviewer talking about that topic and just Wow. So it's really cool to have you really back talking back. about this. And I'm going to get you to fill in the gaps in just a second. Okay. Izzy Warrington. This is also your second rodeo with the She Word because you were on last season's show, Women in the Arts, with Ira Losco and Tez Saliba, which was a brilliant, brilliant and fantastic show. But I happened to see that you'd started talking about the menopause on your socials. And I said, okay, First of all, we have to do another show about menopause. But secondly, I have to have Izzy. And Deirdre Faruja, this is a f your first time as a she-worder. I'm a she-virgin. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> um, what a great phrase. I'm going to use that more than once now. You're an athlete. You're an Olympian. You're a wife. You're a mother. Uh, but your, freed, your feed, your social media feed is so frequently... Uh, filled with these amazing pictures of around the Maltese Islands and beyond to other countries as well. You're a total outdoorsy person. Indeed. <laughs> incredibly active. And I'm really grateful because it just is so inspiring to see photographs of yourself because you lead these trail runs and these treks all around our own islands, but far, far beyond. So I'm going to come to you in a second first. But Karen, what did I miss out? What, what else about you do we need to know? Um... So I'm also work-related, like I do psychotherapy. I work in the psychotherapeutic field and um, I currently see quite a few women who are going through menopause because they have to deal with anxiety that comes with that. So um, 
that's one of the areas I work on. Um, since we met last, not much has changed. <laughs> I'm just a busy tennis mom right now because my daughter's playing tennis really seriously, like two or three hours a day. So wow, I'm her driver. <laughs> so that's about I like that. I'm a, I'm a chauffeur. I'm a driver. But you're also a, a mature mum because you became a yes. mum at 42. And 42. for anyone who hasn't seen the show, either on the interview or on the first season of the She Work, go back and see it because your your story, Karen, is extraordinary, and it gives hope to any woman who has fertility challenges. And I and thank you for that. So I'm really glad you're back here. And of course, I forgot to mention about your your therapy, your, your psychology, and all the rest of it because that's an incredibly important part of what we're going to be discussing today. Izzy, what did I miss out with you? You're an artist. You're a, an actress. Yeah, well, um, I work in the arts, eh? artist, visual artist, performing artist. Um, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then, like, uh, you know, I love, I love to, to exercise. Um, I have quite a good social life. Um, uh, what else? I mean, that's most of it, really. That, no, that will do for the time being, because <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's enough of a CV. Uh, and Deirdre, more about you, because you you obviously also have a massive, massive legacy with regards to sports in Malta. Oh, gosh, yes. I mean, as I say, my former life, I was an athlete in my former life. I competed for Malta for 20 years, um, did eight small nations games, four world championships, the Olympics, um, kind of then it was time to call it a day. Um, but since then, I'm very, very fortunate that I, um, I freelance. I freelance as a personal trainer, which is... I, as I say, you know, they say if you, um, if you do a job that uh, that you love, you won't work a day in your life. Yep. And I, I am, I can truly say that. I don't work full time, but I have the most amazing clients who have become friends, and I'm very, very fortunate to do what I do. So. I love that, and I love that phrase. I used that phrase myself recently I really, when I was talking I re- I, about I, this. And I mean that hand on heart. Yeah. You know, I really, really do feel um, lucky because I, I, I love it. I really, really do. Very fortunate. Well, we're we're all pretty much around the same age, Team Choi. Uh, (laughs) And I'm going to run some statistics relating to the topic today, which is menopause. 29% of women never saw information about the menopause before they experienced it. One-fifth of women surveyed had experienced symptoms for a year before being assessed by a healthcare provider, and 34% had never been formally assessed or diagnosed as menopausal. Most women, 73% of women, reported that they were not currently treating their menopause, which includes hot flushes, weight gain, difficulties with sleep, night sweats, amongst others. But symptoms can also include bad bacteria in the gut, exhaustion, fatigue, joint and muscle pain, and inflammation, amongst others. I mean, that statistic that 73% of women don't treat their symptoms of menopause is staggering. We're going to talk about this, the symptoms uh, in just a moment. I still can't believe that this topic is a radically life-changing event that affects every single woman who gets to this period in her life. There, there is no escape. I thought I would escape it. Myself <laughs> and Moira, we were like, no, we thought it would never arrive. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, isn't this not true? to me. <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> so, well, look, no. <laughs> you start. Where are you on your journey? When you, where are you, D, on your menopause journey? Because you, you're just saying that you're like, I, I thought I'd avoid it as well. Um, you know, no, I mean, I'm, I'm turning 51 soon. Um, and yeah, it just crept up on me like two years ago. And I've kind of accepted it now. And yeah, 50% of the world's population have to go through it. So, I'm not special and it's going to happen to me and it has. So yeah, a lot of changes obviously um, and dealing with it in the best way I can. But you thought like me, you thought it wouldn't happen. Yeah, because you know, of course not. (laughs) You know, I train and and I fit and I eat well and and, you know, I'm happy and I, you know, I'm I'm not overweight and, but yeah, of course it did. (laughs) Absolutely. There is yeah. nobody who's exempt. Exactly. Um, so are you at a comfortable place? Have you, are you at a place where you've managed your symptoms or do, are you still facing ch- challenges daily? Um, I think it's, um, in my case, it's more, I'm, I'm managing because I'm 
see your femorel on the table and I am taking them and they are I, I, I say this genuinely they are my godsend at the moment um I I'm, I'm not having as many hot flushes with them but for me it's more having been an athlete for so many years and having always had it's going to sound a bit funny but I, I was always slim and fit and strong and always ate very well and seeing my body change for me has been the hardest thing because it has in the last two years um I've put on two kilos that I cannot shift and okay people say oh it's two kilos but when you've spent your life in a particular way and always being strong and having your body in a particular way, this has been my hardest thing. I've started to see my elasticity in my body, like my arms, I'm losing elasticity. And I have some cellulite. Wings? I have some cellulite. I've never, ever had cellulite. And it's like, <laughs> you can say it. You can say, what the fuck is that? <laughs> we can, like, we can say that. What the fuck is this on my legs? <laughs> so in, for me, that's my biggest challenge. Everything else I can cope with. The mood swing, but because ha having been an athlete, so that's my perspective. We're going to come to in this second the list of symptoms because one thing that I found when when I got into this phase was just the symptoms that nobody talks about. But we'll come to that in a second. I just want to kind of be a bit intrusive. Izzy, you spoke out, spoken out about your menopausal journey. You've been very open about this on social media. So where are you at along the road? Well, I'm 55, and um... amazing. Thank you. And I started at menopause, I think, about three years ago. And it it really was a minefield because, um, as Deidre said, uh, you know, I thought, nah, it's not going to happen to me. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You see, you know, just after my period started, a few months down the line, I was really like, this is fine. This is this is a joke. You know, it's, it, and then it's really hit with a vengeance. Um, actually, now looking back, I realize the symptoms started way before uh, during perimenopause because uh, one of the things that used to s come and go uh, were pains in my knees. And like D, uh, you know, D I, I was always, I always loved exercise. I loved to be fit. I had, you know, my weight was always in check. Um, uh, and because I'm a performer, you know, if there's a dance number or even just getting up onto, you know, a higher step is a bit of a problem. And you're like, ooh, that hurt, you know. It's it's a big issue for me. It got to the stage as this menopause progressed that a couple of years ago, it was so bad. I was in agony, actually. And it was from my knees all the way down to my feet, you know, that I had to be, I think I had plantar fasciitis as well. God. So I was going, you know, for like um, therapy for it, which wasn't really doing any good. And then I realized out of the blue, because most of the time, I'll be honest, I was just like fumbling about in the dark with everything, with all the symptoms, because that was just yeah. one of the many symptoms. And we'll list them in a minute, but you, you mentioned so about then being I, in the dark. So then I said, you know, I was just looking up online. I mean, I'm always researching online because sometimes it's your only option. Um, I had gone to a couple of GPs, but the, it was just pointless, basically. And then I realized, okay, then let me wear shoes with arches. And then it's like, a couple of weeks down the line and I was fine you know and now I'm really fine but I've got to be really careful what footwear I wear so 95% of the time it's footwear that's orthopedic you know we're definitely and... coming to that because that has been my personal experience and why I believe that we had to do this show again because I I like you uh, had a metatarsal collapse we'll talk about that in a minute because before we go there Karen I mean you've just mentioned that you're you are you are mentoring, you're, you're talking to women, you're, you're tr sharing very, very deep conversations with women who are going through this as well, but you have your own journey. So where are you at with this wonderful okay. joy that is the menopause? Um, I'm turning 54 next week. Oh, and happy birthday. Thank you. And um, I went into full menopause um, at 50, I think. It was when I hadn't had a period for a year. And that's when you're considered to be in menopause. 
But the perimenopause before that, the seven years before that, which is average duration of a perimenopause. Um, How many years? Seven years on average. Seven years for perimenopause? On average. It can be more, it can be less, but it's averagely seven years. Um, till, till, till you hit menopause where you don't have a period for 12 months. Wow. Anyway, and um, till then it was mainly just hot flushes, but no biggie. I thought I can deal with this. And I'm the type of person who really just gets on with stuff. I don't like making a fuss. I don't like making a big deal. And I used to think menopause was just going to be one more thing that I would handle. Like, no big deal. You know, I just get on with it. And <laughs> I'm not a drama queen in that way. And um, But I was really surprised because I swear I really did not expect to be affected so badly it was yeah. I think my worst experience with it was um, panic attacks which I had never experienced before preceding every hot flush I would just get this overwhelming sense of panic dizziness could hardly breathe and um, the hot flushes were constant it wasn't like every half an hour constant so I was constantly in a state of like panic anxiety and I just, um, after about a year of practically killing everyone in my yeah. household, um, they're like, I said, I told my husband, I said, I'm going to go and speak to the doctor because I really don't think I need to live this way. I think if there are risks associated with HRT, I think I'd rather live with those than live through this because I'm not living anyway. And I went to speak to my doctor. He prescribed HRT and everything vanished within six days. Wow. And you Six had told days. me, because we've had this conversation before, mm -hmm. uh, you talked about this on the interview yes. and you mentioned to me, and I, I was going into this, I just kind of started to come to the realization that maybe, maybe these changes that were happening to me was that thing that I thought would never happen to me. And you said HRT. And so as soon as I got my results, uh, I, I was like, no, no, I, I want the drugs. I'm taking the drugs. And, you know, everybody has a different solution to it. But I remember you recommending me and saying it's going to be days and then you're going it to feel... six days. Yeah. I didn't have a... From when I started taking them six days later, the hot flushes stopped. And with that, all the anxiety and panic attacks. I mean, I'm still, still much more irritable than I was in my 20s or 30s or before menopause. Much more short-tempered, much more aggressive, but <laughs> at least, you know, there isn't the panic attacks. And What if you could start your journey over? Start here and start again there. That's how life works, in a circular way. We understand the importance of circles, and that's why you are at the heart of ours. Find your way to wellness with Browns. You know what you've just said, what the three of you have just said, and we're going to come into these, is that first of all, Deirdre, you, you, if there was anybody on this island that is fit and is, is an exemplary example of somebody who is athletic and fit and eats right, and yeah. it's you. And so if you can't escape it, there's no hope for anybody else. And that's with respect to everybody else, but we, we've got an Olympian here for crying out loud. If an Olympian can't escape menopause, there is no hope. It's not something that comes because you're not doing something right. It's going to get you no matter what. You said, Izzy, you said something very, very important, that there was a black hole of information. And I think this is that's something very profound. And then, of course... Karen, you've mentioned about the symptoms and about the irritability and so on. So I'm going to ask a question first, and it's going to—I'm going to reiterate something that you said, and I just jumped on you because you talked about the pain. I went to see um, an orthopedic surgeon recently, and I said I I'd had the same pains in my leg. This is one of the reasons I never got hot flushes. I don't believe I got really grumpy, but that could be. <laughs> You'd have to ask the people I live with for that. But uh, but I certainly got the, the pains in my legs where I couldn't get out of bed without being in agony. And, and then that I took HRT and then recently I started getting pains in my feet. And I went to the orthopedic surgeon and he said to me, let's do an x-ray. 
didn't give him any of my medical history, didn't even give him my age. He did an x-ray and he went, your metatarsals have collapsed, you're menopausal, right? And I said, I'm sorry, what? He said, 90% of women, their metatarsals are going to collapse. So the muscles in the arch of your foot happens in pregnancy and it happens in menopause. And 90% of women are affected by this. And maybe a lot of women don't know this because they don't run or they're not you know, athletic in that respect. But that is so common and yet we never talk about it. I had no idea. So I'm going to ask you, Deirdre, just as you're taking your scarf off, I'm wondering, <laughs> and you bring out the fan. <laughs> I want to start with you again. Can you list some symptoms so that we just really on the table, we just throw it all in the middle of the table uh, it, here. So it's funny because I, I went forward a bit before I went back. But yes, going back to the perimenopause, I remember being sort of, yeah, a couple of years before, being very blue. I was really down a lot, um, feeling very depressed and sort of annoyed with thinking that I was useless. This was probably when I was um, probably when I was about forty-seven, I think. A feeling, a, a feeling of uselessness, which is, isn't even a word, but um, and always feeling that I have two daughters. So um, Robin is not just nineteen, and Kira's seventeen. Um, so I'm talking, I don't know, maybe three years ago, four years ago, maybe even before. I can't even, I can't even remember what it was, but maybe five years ago. And always feeling that whatever I was doing at home was the wrong thing. Um, to a point where um, I won't say that I was suicidal because that's not a word to use lightly. But very much feeling that I was useless in my family's life and actually going out in the car um, and screaming. It didn't happen a lot, once or twice, um, but that's something that, and, and now in hindsight, now that I am in full-blown menopause, I know that it was my perimenopause. And uh, yeah, so. Wow. Yeah, it was awful. It was really, and, and thinking there was something wrong with me and um, I'm not a good wife, I'm not a good mother, I'm, I'm not a good daughter. I'm not a good sister because I was clashing with with clashing with the people who I love and who love me. Um, not to the point, as I say, I won't use the word suicide lightly at all. But um, I never thought I would um, go down that road. But feeling very, very, very blue. So that is incredible. Uh, but that was yeah, probably four or five years ago. So anything aside from that you want to add to the pot? Because that in itself is phenomenal. But you mentioned about hot flushes and, and any other symptoms that you've gone through? Uh, apart from what I mentioned before about I have put on a couple of kilos that uh. I can't shift, but that's that's in here. Apart from that, not really, no. But then you mentioned, you say that, but, I, you know, I, I myself, I've always had an incredibly flat stomach, big ass and huge thighs, but my flat stomach has always been the bit that I was most proud of. And there's this pouch that is almost impossible. I'm not wrong, right? It's oh, almost yes. impossible to get rid of. Menopause weight yep. goes on the tummy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it. it's the muffin top that just won't go away. Right. So so no let's way. throw that in there as well. I'm kind of in my, I'm mentally yeah. listing. It's We've because got of that. the... Low levels of estrogen. Of estrogen, right. apparently. So, yes. so anything else? Like, uh, apparently. I mean, go, go for it, go for it. There is more. Um, so even people who have never suffered from depression are, prone, are more prone to it during this phase in life, especially in the per perimenopause, though, because in perimenopause, there, is, there are... Um, very big fluctuations between hormone levels because it's still settling. It's still like sometimes you produce an egg and have all the good hormones like estrogen and progesterone. Sometimes you don't. So then you've got a lack of them. And that fluctuation can cause yep. this anxiety, depression. Usually once you're in full-blown menopause, then everything starts to stabilize and you don't have these big swings. So you're less prone to depression and and these kind of things, um, just an added. Mm. And, no, and no, no. in fact, funnily enough, with me, perimenopause was a really tumultuous time, you know, because of all these mm -hmm. fluctuations. My moods yeah. were like up, down, like big curves there, Horrible. you know. Um, uh, and then one of the great things about menopause, actually, because there are some, you know, good things, was I've never had such stable moods. I mean, it's just wonderful. 
I have to, I, and I know uh, I have to stay away as much as possible from anything that is that could induce stress. So I'm much more aware because before, I don't know about you, but I used to feel indestructible. You know, I used to yes. think, ah, oh, yes, whatever King life throws at me, it's yes, I can go for it. it, no problem. You know, like yeah. fighting away, no problem, no problem. You know, then when I suddenly there was a turning point when when I started menopause. So my moods are really, I've never been so serene in my life, which is one of the most wonderful things. But um, but I really have, I'm much more vulnerable if when it comes to triggers. stressful situations. You have to avoid the triggers. I have to, yes. And I need to really be aware and really in touch with my body to say, listen, this is your capacity. Don't go beyond because you know that's really going to destabilize you. So I really now... I'm much more careful with myself than I used to ever be in my life. Anything else you want to throw into the bucket in the middle of the table that is the menopause I'm, gift? I found the same. <laughs> <laughs> I found the same thing though. I, um, suddenly, before menopause or before in my forties and below, I used to think I was indestructible. I could deal with anything, and I've become much more in touch with my vulnerable side. And also with my um, human side. And I know this body has to last the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm much kinder to it. I don't train as hard. I don't feel the need to work out and feel pain after a workout. I take everything much easier, much kinder, much more accepting of myself. And so that's a plus. Side. I'm going to take that as a personal lesson because I am still in a massive denial phase where I still think I can do everything I did two years ago and I'm not quite there yet, but I'm listening to you. This is really profound to me and this is what I love about this show, but I'm going to list the frequently listed symptoms, which I believe is written by a man and I'll tell you why, because this appears, this list appears, if you go and Google menopause uh, symptoms. These are the most frequently listed symptoms. And I'll explain why I think it's written by a man in just a second. Hot flushes, okay? Uh, we have sudden feelings of hot or cold in your face, neck or chest, which make you dizzy. Difficulty sleeping, yes, had that one. Uh, maybe you, the, the, the lack of sleep makes you feel tired and irritable the next day. Palpitations, when your heartbeat suddenly become more noticeable. Headaches, migraines, more worse, uh, uh, that are worse, uh, more worse than usual. Muscle aches and joint pains, we discussed that. Changed body shape and weight gain, yes, okay. Skin changes, including dry and itchy skin. Reduced sex drive. Vaginal dryness and pain, itching or discomfort during sex. Reoccurrence of urinary tract infections, plus dry, owl, dry eyes and dry mouth. None of that mentioned depression. None of it mentions, you won't find it frequently mentioned about oh, mood change. You won't find the collapsed metatarsals, and yet 90% of women have collapsed, collapsed metatarsals. It doesn't man mention bad gut, which again is a, when I've spoken to gynecologists, oh, they're like, no, really your whole body is changing. Yeah, your sure. gut is changing. You've got to start taking um, probiotics to, to balance your gut. These are things that you, you're going, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, but they're not true. mentioned. So here comes the question that I'm going to ask in relation to that. If this is something that every single woman on the planet is going to have to face in one way, shape, form, or the other, why do we have that black hole you mentioned? Why, and we've, I've asked this on the show before, but I want to ask from you guys, why do we not talk about it? Why is there so much misinformation about something that is going to affect every woman that makes it this far? I mean, my theory, I, I don't think it's one thing in particular, but I think overall, I think it's this great, big, overwhelming stigma about growing old, yeah. which the media pushes, you. Yes. you know, in every yeah. single, uh, from every single aspect, they, they push it. This whole thing, it's like even, you know, 
th this thing, uh, sort of, uh, you're 55, you know, like, oh, you, you're getting on a bit, or like, are you sure you want to say your age? Oh, of course I want to say yeah, my I'm age. With you. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Pretend I'm not 55. Yeah. It's such a oh, gift that we, we're here, it's right? It's a gift. This is it. And at the end of the day, this is what I say. Yes, it's true. There are a lot of challenges when it comes to menopause. Yes, just like there was with getting your period because I was in the dark as well. It was like, oh, nobody said it's going to hurt so much, you know, and oh, nobody mentioned, you know, that everything else that comes with it. So it's another phase of your life. And I hope that there's still a lot for me to look forward to in terms of what I want to do in my life. And I'm really happy I've reached this age. And, um, you know, like, sort of, what a, come what may, I want to make the most of my life. I don't want to be thinking, oh, God, I'm 55, you know, I'm falling to bits. I mean, I'm doing the best I can sort of to keep my body healthy, you know, and especially my mental state as well, because I think those two, you know, really go hand in hand. Um, so I'm doing the best I can in this body. <laughs> um, so I think that going back to your question, it's this big stigma about aging yeah. that is all over the media in every single aspect. Take even, for example, if you see a, a fashion shoot, you know, somebody, uh, somebody advertising plus sizes. Now, if you're a plus size, you're going to have things like cellulite, which most women have. I've got loads of it, you know. Um, you're going to have muffin top, tops and, you know, fat tummy and all that. But no, we're still really curvy. Our skin is perfect. Of course, because it's all airbrushed, you know. This is all, you know, this is all what the media is doing. It's like, get real, you know. Bodies are different. People are different. It's always these things pushing. It's pressure. Yes, it is. the pressure I feel like to be young, we you know. Have, we like, may have no. touched a raw nerve here. <laughs> <laughs> It's She's like, like Izzy's in there with a dagger. It's just one of those things that really annoys me because it has affected me a lot in my life because I too went through the stage of denial when it came to menopause. Um, uh, you know, and I'm thinking, why can't I do the workouts that I just, I did, you know, four years ago. I could do a really, really tough workout and feel great afterwards. No, my body changed. Yeah. Get over it. You know, it's just the way it is. Karen's nodding and looking at me all the way through everything you're saying, and I, I can so hear it Dean relate. on the side. Yep, yep, it yep. resonates <laughs> with me. Yep. But also, <laughs> if we go with the average life expectancy, one third of the average woman's life with the average life is going to be as a menopausal woman. So it's life is not over. You know, we can't say... Um, I've, I'm old age now, I'm old, I'm, you know, there's so much left to live. But, but then let me come back to this, uh, this question, the original question, because something that Deirdre just said really, really touched me. You were obviously in perimenopause, you were obviously at a point where your mental health was massively yeah, It impacted. really was, and I didn't realise. That's, no, that's the funny thing. So why isn't it on the list? Uh, honestly, like when I think back now, in hindsight, um, why didn't I, I have a really patient husband and I, I'm very, very lucky to have a really, really good bloke because he must have wanted to <laughs> shoot me <laughs> as opposed to me. Um, so in, in that respect, um, I'm very grateful, you know, as well. But like, I didn't know what was wrong with me. But now, it, yeah, now I know that it was my flipping hormones jumping around all over the place. Definitely. So why isn't it on the list? I mean, if there's something why that didn't I profound. Know? Why didn't well, I know? that is a Honestly, whole other question. Yeah. We can jump straight into the next question if you want, because I want to find out how much you ladies knew about menopause and perimenopause before you entered that phase. Because let me tell you, I had never heard the term perimenopause. I, I, was, I don't think I did either, actually. Neither no. did I. No, neither did I. So how much did you know about menopause before you entered? It was just menopause. You reach menopause mm. and then it was, you know, there wasn't a... But you knew out. what the symptoms were going to be or... No, uh, all I had heard hot of were flushes. hot flushes. Exa That's yes, it. Exactly. And a bit of irritability. Yep. That's it, yes. And then you become yeah. a grumpy old woman. 
That's all I heard. I, I was reading something recently where it said the doctor, uh, male doctors prescribing HRT back in the 80s when it was first, or when, mm. whenever it was um, developed, as in the the cure for women to stop being dull, stop being more um, agreeable to the people who lived with them, as in this elixir for youth and um, being bearable. So, I mean, obviously women didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to admit they had reached that point of being unbearable, being over it, it being unattractive. That way, yeah. yeah, that's how it's Being unattractive, yeah. being crazy. You know, people feel a bit of shame when they feel I've become that. I don't want to be that. So let's not talk about it. It's funny because Sue Caruana said in one of her Keeping It Real, she said, I finally got to the point in my life, she's 52, I do believe, finally got to the point in her life where emotionally and mentally she was at the best she'd ever been. And here's the thing, you get to the best you've ever been and then your body does this to you. I mean, what the heck? But you didn't know about perimenopause and you didn't know about menopause before before you got there. So obviously this has all come as a, as a massive awakening as a massive Karen I'm coming to you that you're the 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 person with the the understanding from a, a psychological point of view what impact does that have on women when they're facing the biggest change of their life and they don't know about it and they don't know anything about what's going to happen to them and they don't and and like in in this situation it's just hugely impactful in a really negative way I think um, anything that is unknown creates anxiety so um, and when you when you reach the menopause and the perimenopause you're going through all the emotional side of it as well because of the hormone changes but it, there's so many factors that are taken into consideration as well that you're dealing with like a lot of women are dealing with their families growing up and so they they don't have that role their, their mother role of like looking after a family mm. um there's um as ex- existential issues of like why am i here what's my purpose what am i going to do next so there's a lot to deal with and when I, when i speak to women a lot of um the questions go around the, what's my purpose now you know is it just growing old and um, because of the empty nest syndrome, where well, I haven't had to deal with that personally, because I still have, I had a, girl, a daughter when I was 42, so, but a lot of my friends now don't have kids at home, their children have left, and they're finding new ways to feel fulfilled, but um, if, you know, so you don't have a career, or if your main um, focus in life was family, I think that's one of the biggest issues that creates a lot of... Um, depression or and also if I can cut in for a second I think sometimes um and it's not our our part if we have a partner it's not our partner's fault but um I think men don't go through menopause obviously so you kind of your partners are going you know they're carrying on with their life and everything and and I don't mean this in any negative sense at all you're very right but you're you're in, in my case my husband is still carrying on he's still training his career is growing he's opening a new business so he's you know still flourishing kind of thing and I'm kind of what's happening to me and in a way again going back to my parent I was started to, I started to feel a little bit and again 
I, I, this is nothing to do with my partner because it, it was my hormones. And I was like, it's really unfair that I'm feeling really shitty and he's got this going on and he's starting this, you know? And, and I, then I started feeling guilty because I'm not jealous. It's how can I, I felt a little bit resentful that he was flourishing and I'm kind of feeling all this, all these horrible thoughts. You know, it's, it, uh, I don't know how to... It's not because you didn't want him to be uh, like that. Thank you. You've, you've got my point. You exactly. You felt, <laughs> why me? Why am I uh, going through this? Yeah. yeah. And why am I feeling so held back and so um, down? Not It wasn't all the time, you know, but sort of... Um, and he's happy and I'm feeling really, really down, you know? And did you talk to your friends? I mean, once you knew what was happening, because I, I'm yes. still finding that, that yes. I'll talk to my my oldest friend, my best friend, and I'll say to her, I'll try and convince her that we need to have a conversation about this. And and she's, I mean, maybe because we're both English, we don't, English people are a bit weird, but um, but she's not necessarily wanting to talk about it. Did you find it easy to talk to your yes, friends of your same I do. Age? I, I mean, I talk, I can talk to the wall, but I, I, I can, <laughs> but yes, I, I um, yes, I, I do talk to friends and I did talk to friends and it did help being in the same situation. And maybe not the, a couple of people did were a, a bit blue like I was. Um, but yes, it did help. And I think that we should, as women, um, talk and, and I, I talked to men about it when like, I was away uh, when I was just started getting these hot flushes and I was like, bloody hell, what's going on? And bring my fan out. And like, I talk about it even when I'm with men, I'm in, I'm menopausal. I just, you know, say it now, you know, it's nothing I used to, to be... whisper it at first. No, I'm just and now like, I say I'm it. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> sorry, excuse me. I'm just going to strip for a second. <laughs> Let me just take all my layers off. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> They're just so, on the beach in the uh, middle of yeah, Tinia Point. You know, so, She's just taking know, all the clothes like, off. It's so, fine. So now I'm much more open about it. And I think we have to be. For, so people will understand what's happening to them when they are going through it. And, so, if, and I think, you know, just to, to add to that, you, Karen, when we had that show 18 months ago, whatever, when you started talking about it on the show, that gave me courage. I was like, if Karen likewise, can talk about it. Yes publicly on a podcast you know maybe I should own up and and talk about it and and I think again you're talking about your symptoms you're talking about what's affected you and you're talking about yours and I think it gives courage to other women mm. because I as so. you identified this shame Sh and you said as you said Karen we've made it this far jeez we didn't do anything wrong these are the Olympian for crying. I'm getting obsessed by this girl fanning over here. <laughs> you're but if you're, me an, goosebumps, if you're so an Olympian and and can't escape it, there really is no hope. I'm not saying the rest of us are not interested in Please. in fi <laughs> fitness, but if we can't, if you can't escape it, nobody can. And it's one of the reasons that I really wanted to to have you here because you you've pursued fitness and you've kept doing that all the way through it. And we'll come it come to that in just a second. Karen, do you talk to your friends about it? I think one of the most unspoken things about of all the symptoms is the stuff that goes on down there. <laughs> like, I'm saying it like oh, down there. let's have that conversation. I, I think, said vag <laughs> vaginal dryness. You've got you know <laughs> down there. free rain. I'm not even saying it out loud here. <laughs> but I was um, doing some research recently about because I had to write this um, article about your bits. <laughs> and, and one of the biggest taboos was what happens. In your bits, like amongst women, amongst themselves. So, although we speak about hot flushes, irritability, and all this stuff, but that what, um, like, beyond the dryness, the itchiness, the changes in in um, structure and grey hairs and everything are not spoken about. It, and the percentage was really, really high. I was really shocked. And I said, it's true. I've never had these conversations with any of my friends. That's really interesting. Isn't Again, it? but don't you think it's from, it's always seeing things. Everything has to look pretty. And from young. a male perspective, yes. don't you think? Because sure. it's like, let's not talk about it because maybe someone won't fancy me or they'll think, you know, like I'm, I'm an old prune or something. It's just. You know, I mean, men have issues as well with, yeah, with their sexuality their as, they well. grow, as they grow older, you know. Yep. So it's just, again, and I think it's always because we're always under the male gaze in a way. I, I think everything has always been structured in that way. 
In being attractive. In having in... to be attractive, young, young equals fertile, you know, equals much more desirable to a man. Uh, that's what I think. I think it's a very male, you know, it's, it's the man's world syndrome, I, I feel. But I, I keep reiterating this to, to younger women. And I'm pretty sure that you ladies are going to agree with me. We've talked about it on this show and I, and I keep evangelizing about this as much as I can. Something happens when you hit 40, or at least every woman I've spoken to has hit 40 or around 40, that you wake up and one day you just don't give a shite as much as you used to. There's, this, there's something that, that is, I don't know whether it's just because we've gotten older, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, that you don't care about as much. In hindsight, I'm thinking about it now and I'm wondering if it's menopause because it's it's the one thing that makes me go, I'm sorry, you want me to pay for the parking when I've just paid for the parking? And you're doing what? <laughs> you're just standing there telling me which parking space? You want me to pay for that parking? Come here. You know you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's that little bit of freedom where you don't care as much as you used to, where you actually, and I, I keep telling young women, you wait till you get here. It's really fun. And whilst we have that is dichotomy of maybe media and, and society doesn't see us as valuable, I still think that there's a bit of freedom that comes from maybe not how we feel about our bodies because I still carry the same anxiety with regards to mm -hmm. that. But certainly mentally, I'm like, I lasted this long, my friend. Yeah. You bring it here and tell me that seriously and it's getting worse as I get older. Yes. I think we're more confident <laughs> as well as human beings. We've and got less more... tolerant maybe. Yes, yeah, is that I, menopause you know, or is that just age? Combination, combination of both. Maybe so, it is. I okay. never thought of that. <laughs> no, it's right. like if you know. I mean, I, I'm not going to be embarrassed about you. You know, it's like listen, uh, this is how it is. W what do you want me to do? Sugarcoat it for you? You know, I I think it's a combination of of both. Really, and uh, like you said, the confidence of like not feeling you need to please to be liked. Yes. You know, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. me. And if you don't like it, I'm not going to waste more of my life trying to please yes. someone else or get approval. I'm okay to be me. I think and, that's... And so we should. Yes, yes. we should. Sure. Spend so many years of trying to please. That's, I know. If only yeah. we knew what we know now. If we only we I mean, knew we, it like 30 you're years not, ago. You're not going to like everyone. Not everyone's going to like you. Exactly. And, this is me. and that's okay. I suffered yeah. so much from being Same a pleaser here. when I was younger. Same that, yeah. It's so liberating it is. not to feel the need to mm -hmm. be liked. Like Lily told me, my daughter said, Mom, no one likes you. And I was like, I'm okay with that. <gasps> I loved it. <laughs> I yeah. loved it. It felt so good to say that. Mm That's amazing. So we have these complete dichotomies because we're still going to come back to the vaginal dryness. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not letting go. And everything else. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you've been honest and talked about your mental health leading up to, to menopause. And, and, and you've, Karen, you've identified that this is the one thing that of all of them, even in the last show, we didn't talk about that. And, and we didn't even say vagina. We're just going to say vagina quite a lot um, because, because we don't. It's so true. But it, it, but it, it is, it does change, and it does say on here. This is why I, I'm quite convinced that this list is written by a man because it says reduce sex drive, vaginal dryness and pain, itching and discomfort during sex, and it somehow sounds like an accusation. So if that's the case, and I, I mean, is this something? Is that a conversation you would have? We're sitting around the table having this conversation. Is that something you talk about with friends? With my friends, yes, I would have that conversation. Yes, I, I wouldn't. Maybe not with. Well, I think with most of them, I would, yes. Because yeah. I can tell you that's not a conversation. It's not a topic I think I've ever really sat down and talked about. I don't, I don't recall I having that conversation a either. I, mean, well, I don't think I'd have a problem. I Maybe uh, it's just... Hasn't come up. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 
<laughs> Excuse the pun. <laughs> Excuse the pun. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Men do have to deal with with getting older yes, because they, they do. do deal with that issue. Yes, don't yes. They? yes. They, they and, do. and you know, we we're, we're kind of beating ourselves up about the fact that our vaginas might be a little bit dry, but they have their own challenges as they get older and you know, as well. Funnily enough, going back to what my theory is about this whole thing about the male gaze, I think erectile dysfunction. Let's say it is a lot more sp- spoken about than vaginal dryness, let's face it, because it's something that affects men. But I get none, I bet none of them would admit to it, love. <laughs> no, fair enough, but still, no, I do, think it's more out there. They do than, talk than, about taking the blue pills with pride. Yeah, you know. It's true. It's much more, at, at least I knew really? about that way before I knew about what's going to happen to me, you know. It's true. It's very, very true. Listen, we've talked about all the downsides of, um, of obviously, of the menopause. There is one great big upside. No periods. Oh, my oh God. Oh, God, yes. Oh, isn't, God, but isn't yes. that amazing? It's, it's wonderful. Isn't that cool? It's wonderful. I do, I, I, yeah, for same, you? Same. I haven't had a period for a year and a half. Depends which HRT you take, though, because if you're taking I, um, I don't um, progesterone, the combination one, that still has... And you still have a uterus. You do get bleeding every month, although it's very, yes, it's very uh-huh. minimal, and it's it's because your uterus is still prepared to receive an egg, even though no egg is coming. Okay, I see. A fertilized egg, and then it's released, but it's like two or three days, and it's okay. very little. So it's not with the pains and the. Isn't that what you're taking the HR? I am, and 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 I actually did um, just in the couple of weeks ago I had all of my friends now that you're describing that um I didn't realize that it was kind of a common thing because I did have a situation where I was like oh I don't think this is meant to be happening and all of my girlfriends I mentioned this to and my husband said right you're going to go to the to the gynecologist and of course I was in Prague and and I went to the gynecologist who tested absolutely everything and I was not prepared for that honestly ladies doesn't matter where you're at if you're ever going to the gynecologist be fully prepared because that was a little bit embarrassing um but but exactly that however on the whole 99 percent I don't have a period and I I can tell you it's it is the one joy it is next week we're going to be talking about menstruation on this show and I'm just like <laughs> no, that is the upside yeah, thank definitely God. it's goodbye <laughs> goodbye and good riddance and the, the funny thing is I had only all. like recently discovered the menstrual cup like about two I years know, ago really too late like, yeah, hey, I, know. I, I would be on that <laughs> I know brilliant. and then I was like okay stop now <laughs> right, I mean I use it for me yeah. before you use it for four years but so but yeah. there is that so it so let's run through this because uh, Deirdre, you pointed at femoral, and I, I'm, I, I bond with you because we're on the same HRT. I'm not on HRT. I'm just taking those recharge. They're my lifesaver. But I take really. these as well. So far, they, and they're enough. They're enough. And quite frankly, I mean, everyone has their. But if I can work with those, I would. I'm happy because this to product carry on is is natural. They're, it's, I'm, I'm, they're working for me. Initially, I was just taking one, but now I need the morning and the evening one. So who knows if I would have to go on HRT later on? Oh, you ta- yeah, yeah. You take the two day. I just take one, one in the morning, one when I remember. But if I don't <laughs> take it, I'm flipping no. Because <laughs> so yes, they're working for me. They're working uh, for you. So and I, you, I had to? taken them. The doctor had put me on those, uh, and I think I took them for about two years. But now, now miraculously touch wood um i've weaned myself off them and i i don't take any supplements or anything i don't know if it's good or bad but i feel fine no if you feel fine i'm sure you know i feel fine i haven't got any hot flushes or anything um joint pain is really rare and it's usually let's say because i would have had too much sugar for or too many carbs for a while, you know, and, and then I start to get joint pains and stuff. So now I, um, I've kind of got used to this new body because I honestly feel, um, you know, that my old body was, was like whisked away oh, yes. by aliens and replaced by a new one with no instructions. That's exactly how I <laughs> Isn't feel. Isn't that the best? That is the best. That is it's exactly so true. Oh how my... I feel. I love it. It's that's like, 
what, where is my old body? You know, like I had a, a body that functioned really well. I was used to it, you know. And now it's suddenly like, okay, pfft, here you are. There's this new one. Deal I, with it. No instructions or anything. But that's your body now from now on. Best description I think mm. I've ever heard. It's so true. It's true. <laughs> In fact, I did a little sketch of it because I said, you know, that usually that's how I process my thoughts. I draw them. And it's like, oh, my God, it's just like a cartoon sketch, you know, with the aliens taking away my body into, the, into their, their <laughs> spaceship. And I'm there like, oh, shoot, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> what does this one do? <laughs> Brilliant. How does this one work? But that's oh, why it's a discovery. <laughs> it really is. It really is. But that's why I took, and we had this conversation. That's why I took HRT because you told me almost exactly the same words. You don't recognize your own body. Take HRT, and you'll recognize yourself again. Which I'm still dealing with some of the the, the menopausal symptoms. But for the most part, I would I would say that does happen. You take HRT, and about a week later, you're like, oh, okay, it's coming back. Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm here again. Um, not everything. But but then just coming back to how you treated it, you took femoral and you went through how many years of, of taking that? I think about two years. Um, I also, another one uh, of the symptoms, which started really in perimenopause, uh, but then I think it, uh, fatigue was another thing. Mm. And that was from a slow thyroid. That was another of the, of the many uh, multitude of symptoms. And for years, I remember during peri perimenopause, I started to hate summer so much because oh, the goodness. fatigue I had was unbearable. And the thing is, back then I was still carrying on with my life like I always yep. did. You know, one thing after another, I can do this, no problem. So when summer used to come... I used to be so angry because I used to feel like somebody was pushing me back, you know, like holding me back from moving forward because, and then, you know, after doing blood tests and everything, I realized my thyroid had slowed down. Um, but again, you know, what was a bit frustrating was, so the doctor tells you, okay, your thyroid is a bit slow. It's like, and I'm expecting, okay, so what do you suggest I do? Nothing, you know, I wasn't told nothing. It's like, um, oh, it's a bit slow, but it's fine. But otherwise you're fine, you know. I also got um, higher cholesterol, which I never had before. And that was another thing, you know. So oh, a couple of doctors, gift, I, yeah, I, I went to. I, I was like, you know, and I mean, one of them, I was really annoyed. And it was a female doctor, you know, and, and she was almost angry with me because I didn't want to take statins you know, to lower my cholesterol. I, I, I'm i one of these people. I really try to stay away as much as I can exactly from, same. you know, drugs and same. stuff. And, and um, you know, so it's just like, okay, you don't take this and you're going to have heart disease. Oh, oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Ciao, you know. And then, in fact, um, it was the doctor that you had um, mentioned um, who I started going to, and I found her very good. Dr. Patricia de Gabriella. Yes. Awesome, highly recommended, yes, fantastic, absolutely. amazing woman. Absolutely fantastic. And she yes. really knows about women's things. And I think that's one of the things that I think for all women, I mean, I don't know what your experience was, but when I actually went and sat in front of a woman who knew what I was talking about, I suddenly felt like I mm -hmm. was no longer on my own. I wasn't insane. The things that I'd been experiencing, somebody was saying, oh, no, no, that's no, that's fine. That's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. You, you, and I felt validated and yes. normal again. But again, going back to the fatigue, because I, I still have it. I okay. mean, I lead quite an active life. But when I'm feeling tired, I just go and lie on my bed, Same here. answer my email or whatever. Same and I, sometimes I actually put a, you know, something over a, a head buff over my eyes and I'll sleep for half an hour during the, the afternoon if I have I to. I do that too. Yeah. You know, Sometimes I, I, I think I, there's I, no way I'll funny. get to It's funny because initially I would feel it. kind yeah. of guilty and I'd be like, look at me, I'm, I'm, should I be, I should be doing something. And I'm like, that's how I used to be hell? Well. Like, You know, I'm tired. Yeah, I've been up since sleeping half yes. five in the morning. Why shouldn't I lie down for an hour? Exactly. You, you just so, said something exactly. really, um, really valid. Feeling guilty. The um, guilt. yeah. If you try and live life without shoulds, I should 
be this. You live with life with less guilt. Yes, yes, yes. Because guilt is the emotion you feel. When you feel you should be something, but you're actually here, and that discrepancy makes you feel bad, makes you feel guilty. So if you try and eliminate the shoulds from your life and just say, this is who I am, there's so much less guilt mm -hmm. in life. Absolutely. It really, really works. It was, in a way, one of the psychological exercises I had to do to 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 accept the changes that were happening, you know, because exactly like you. I'm like, still going through it. Oh, but anyway, God, you know, the, the, the acceptance. I, shouldn't, I yeah. shouldn't sleep halfway through the day. It's like, why not? Yeah. In fact, why one not? of the things research shows about, about menopause um, is that um, women f are made to feel weak. Like, it, you know, not strong, not mm. not being able to cope with life if they have, if they feel unhappy or, you know, just get on with it and a strong woman can deal with stuff. And it's okay to feel, it's going to pass. It's who we are. And uh, like you said, validate, acknowledge who mm -hmm. you are. And it's so much more important than trying to be who you think you should be. Yep. Because well it, it just, it's so... Um, this empowering. This empowering, really. exactly. That's it is, because you, you know, because who made these rules? I don't know. <laughs> but it's like nowadays, and society is so demanding nowadays. Now I, I don't have kids, but imagine with you, do you too? You know, who who's got a family to deal with? You've got a full time job. You know, all the other stuff that comes along with life. Plus all the to be a good wife changes you should in your be own this, body. To be a yeah, good, you know, you should be the, a career you know, woman. Who made be these this. rules? At the end of the day, everybody is an individual, and and honor that. Really, I I really honestly I feel like I've learned so much today, and I'm 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 still in that phase where I'm fighting it. I'm still in that phase where yeah, I can run marathons here and there and the other, and I'm really struggling with that. And what you were just saying about the should. And the, it, it, well, again, obviously, I can. You can understand me being a sporty people. Um, I can't. Uh, well, maybe because I'm not running so much in summer, but my body isn't performing as it used to. And now I'm, I'm on this thing. As long as I move every day, whether it's a trek, even if I go for a six k run, which is short, I've kind of, in that respect, it's really interesting. I've kind of accepted that. And this has happened mm -hmm. to me too. I don't to have me. to go for the heavy weights. Yep. Yeah. It's as really... long as I keep my muscles yep. active, yes. toned, strong for enough me, to deal with really life. That's a really big change. It's Absolutely. Enough. I'm totally as long with as, you For there. me, as long as exactly. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm quite active anyway because of the, my, my job. But as long as I, whether it's an, yesterday, I went for an hour's walk and I was like, I actually dragged Nathan out with me because he was crazy busy. Um, but I was like, okay. Yeah, I've, that's, a, that's I, apart from being as, super yeah. active all day. And then the day before I ran 6K, the other day I didn't, you know, as long as I move. And it's interesting how I've actually accepted that it's okay. It's such a turning point. It's, it's really, really such is. a turning point. And I'm, it's I'm amazing. Quite, and I'm actually, actually surprised at myself. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. so, it really is I, wonderful. Can I, can I add to this? Um, like today I was training and I said, I actually had this thought process. What do I want out of life? I want to be, reach my 80s, hopefully, being able to go upstairs, you know, muscles strong enough to take yep. me up the stairs, to so sit down and stand up. I don't need strong, defined, you know, built muscles. I'm okay with just getting getting through life. The be You know, if I overdo it, I'm going to need to replace my hip or... Yeah. I don't need that. I want to be able to live a full life and enough doing enough to get me yeah. there and it's such a turning point for me because before I was like I had to beast it mm -hmm. same here my beast has gone I'm not yeah. sure who's replaced my beast but <laughs> I'm not sure I but really someone you I I honestly feel like I need to go away and do some thinking for what you've just you've said because I'm still I'm still trying to you know I'm still trying to wake the beast up in the morning come on we've got to go and do this you know come on you bitch um but I I think that listening to you of all of you I know that you're all active and I'm feeling that I need to go away and reevaluate what I'm doing particularly I, I still do you. need to train every day yeah something yeah. but it yeah. doesn't have to be a 10k run at but, but you, know, you know five you know, ten five minutes per kilometer you know as long as I my I'm, running I'm, I'm I'm happy that I've reached that stage my running you know? buddy my absolutely fantastic running buddy 
reached last year, we were training for the same goals, a marathon under four, four hours uh, as an 80 K uh, in the salt Lake. And then there was a, another goal as well. I think it was the Gozo under seven hours. And I said to myself, okay, next year I'm 50. I'm going to do the same thing as him. It was his 50th and it was my, and next year is my 50th. And I've got my heart set on achieving the same goals. And you said something that is stuck in my head and I'm going to have to really think on this. He's a guy. He doesn't have menopause. He doesn't have all of the rest of that shit to deal with. So I need to go away and evaluate that. And I think you've given me so much food for thought today. And I'm going to, I know it's incredible, but we are coming towards the close. I, I'm going to go. Oh, back you can, you can interrupt. Second. It's very, very important that you do resistance training. Yes. Yes. Ladies, mm -hmm. make sure that you lift some weights and yeah. mm -hmm. it's super important to be active. Please do. Please. In fact, um, I'll build on that. Like to deal with menopause and aging, it's not just the menopause. Yeah, absolutely. If you lead, a, um, you need to have exercise to be able to counteract the loss of muscle yeah. mass, loss of bone density. Bone density. You yeah. can't. You can't gain bone density. You, you can but stabilize you can, it exactly. Yes. But through exercise, yeah. What you eat can help with symptoms as well, yeah. like um, omega three and rich foods, and like these help with emotions as well, S help stabilize the feel good factor. So eating a clean, healthy, low in sugar, low in salt, you know, but not just because of menopause, just to age properly and, properly. and so that's your, your it's body a gift. And to yeah. be kind to exactly. your body, really. It has to last you for the rest of your you life. Know? So exactly. Yes. Let's get there as So I mean if you had a, a I don't know, a car or a machine. You'd, you know, and look after it, it. you would look after it. No, so you do the same with your body, and you do the Men best mentally you can. as well, not just physically. exactly. I mean, it's it's all one thing because the the mental part is extremely important, of course. You've all given such incredible advice. As I said, I'm really kind of going to take this away with me, and I'm going to sit down and have a good think because I I'm really facing some of the challenges that you've described. Is there a closing thought from each of you just for anybody who's approaching this or coming to this? I mean, for goodness sake, go and read. But don't read that. Don't read that list of symptoms. <laughs> we all know that. We're I'm gonna just going to say look after yourself because you are important. I would say be kind to yourself and reach out because you don't have to suffer through it. You can live through it. I would say embrace every moment of your life because it is precious and even if you are aging, it's another phase of your life yep. and it's part of the journey. So embrace it. Ladies, cheers. 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 Thank cheers. you for having me. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 and that is us.